Thank you. You know, I, I absolutely love to talk about entrepreneurship. You know, you get people like Stephen Jobs and Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, these amazing people that have absolutely changed the world. You know, it blows me away how one person can change the world. You know, the conversation of entrepreneurship often morphs into a great debate. Are entrepreneurs born or are they made? You know, it's one of those questions that I don't think any of us could ever answer. But what every entrepreneur can definitely tell you, without a doubt, is the very first time that they turned an idea into a reality. And that's what I want to talk to you about tonight, this power of turning ideas into reality. For Anne Marie, it happened when she was 37 years old. She became a single mother with really no financial resources, no formal education, and four children under the age of 10. You can imagine she was really afraid. You know, how am I going to raise my children and financially support them? And then Anne Marie had an idea. She thought, what if I open up a hair salon in the basement of my home? You see, I can be at home to raise my children, and I can work at home to financially support them. And with that idea and a little bit of help from a public tuition assistance program, Anne Marie went to cosmetology school, and her idea became a reality. Now, she didn't change the world like Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, but she absolutely changed her life and the life of her four children. So here's a photo of Anne Marie with her four kids on Easter Sunday. Now, I picked the fuzziest photo I can possibly find to save myself a little bit of embarrassment. See, I'm the little guy in the middle with the buck teeth. <laughs> my mom is my hero. She is my mentor. She is absolutely the reason why I became a teenage entrepreneur and then an adult entrepreneur when I started a staffing and recruiting business shortly after college. You know, I was really, really lucky growing up. Besides being a stud athlete, as you can see, <laughs> I had the opportunity to learn business by actually running a business, and I had the wonderful support of a mentor. And t throughout my entire career, I've had this recurring thought, you know, what if every young person was as fortunate as I was and had those same two experiences? So I mentioned earlier that I have recruiting and staffing experience, so I just have a couple of observations of the workforce and what's going on in today's workplace. There's a transformation. Over the last three years, entrepreneurship is everywhere. There are accelerators and incubators, venture capital groups popping up all over the country to support entrepreneurship. And you know, the costs and the barriers to start a new business have never been lower. And it's not only people that are trying to start a new business, it's people like Anne Marie that have an idea on how they want to work independently, work for themselves. So this entrepreneurship movement is really even prevalent within corporations. There's a term for it called an entrepreneur. This is somebody that can take an idea and make it a reality within a large corporation. So if you're a young person and you're entering this new kind of entrepreneurial world, you, you need a new toolkit, an entrepreneurial toolkit. And if you were to ask high school educators just how effective they are at providing this entrepreneurial toolkit, by their own admission, they would say not very. Dr. Cindy Jaskowiak, uh, Assistant Superintendent at District 220, she just retired. She wrote a white paper on this very topic. Now, her white paper is full of a bunch of research, but I'm just going to tell you my takeaway. Cindy would say, we kind of teach our kids how to do school. And what does that mean? They, we really concentrate on test scores. We really concentrate on GPA. We teach our students how to you know, calculate how your teacher will calculate the GPA and just really, you know, figure that out. We, we stress, obviously, things like getting involved in extracurricular activities and volunteering and nail the ACT, nail the SAT. And by the way, if you do all of that, you're going to get into a great college. And if you get into a great college, you're going to get a great job. Now, there's some wisdom in that approach. But as Cindy would point out, there's also some really unintended consequences. See, kids that do school tend to play it safe. They're afraid of taking an alternative route. They're less creative. They're less effective at learning by failing. They don't, they're not as effective at, at problem solving. They don't take chances. 
You know, as I, Cindy points out in her white paper, ironically, those are the exact skills that are needed in this new entrepreneurial world. Cindy's white paper actually goes a little bit further and says, not only are we not doing an effective job at teaching entrepreneurship at a high school level, we actually run the risk of squelching a young person's entrepreneurial spirit. So there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect with what's going on in the work and what's going on in high school education. My good friend Carl Freck is here somewhere. We had this exact discussion, coincidentally at a high school graduation party. And a really fun idea just emerged. We just started kicking around something. We said, what if there was a class in the high school where kids could actually start a business? And what if that class was not only taught by a qualified teacher, but there were members from the community that had subject matter expertise that would come into the class and help teach certain segments? And what if, as kids were forming their business ideas, a mentor joined them? And what if the class wasn't even taught in a traditional classroom, but was taught in a business setting? And what if, as kids wanted funding and have access to funding, we can provide that? Boy, that, I took a step back and said, that's exactly in alignment with the vision I had of that would provide kids an opportunity to learn business by doing business with an effective mentor, the exact two things I had when I was a young person. Carl and I became really excited about this idea, so we decided to call the superintendent of our school, Tom Leonard. Now, as Tom would tell you, when you're the superintendent of a school district with 10,000 students, and two parents call you up and tell you, oh, we have an idea, <laughs> you know, you probably try to avoid taking that call, <laughs> you know? So here's what Tom did. He said, hey, you know, he said to his assistant, put him on my calendar. It was 30 days out. And it was at 6.30 in the morning on a Wednesday. You know, I am convinced that Tom wanted us to cancel that meeting. No doubt about it. So for 30 days, Carl and I got together a couple times. We prepared a PowerPoint. And then we put ourselves in Tom's shoes. We said, gosh, he's really going to have a lot of questions. You know, what about accreditation, school board approval? Who's going to pay for all this? How are we going to get all these volunteers? You know, how are we going to invest in kids' businesses? I mean, he, there was some real barriers here. So we walked into Tom's office 6.30 that morning, you know, Tom was gracious and said, hey, guys, I got an hour slotted for the appointment. And we said, well, we better kind of get right at it. Ten minutes into the meeting, Tom interrupted us. And he, he got the gist of what we were saying. And he said, guys, I have 1.7 years left on my contract. Let's make this happen. I can remove the barriers. You know, I'm an educator. I know how to do this. You guys are entrepreneurs. You can do a lot of the heavy lifting. And for the next two and a half hours in Tom's office, we developed a really, really robust to-do list. The very first thing was a, something called customer discovery. We actually teach this to the students in the entrepreneur class. So you go out and you talk to your, your customers. These were high school kids. So we were going to tell them about the business incubator class. Carl had a small group of students together. They were, you know, going back and forth with questions. And Carl said, or one of the students raised his hand and said, Mr. Freck, I have a question about this business incubator class. What are we going to do with all the chickens when, at the end when they hatch? <laughs> and we we're like, oh, no, we have a lot of work to do. <laughs> you know, so we started going out to entrepreneurs around the country, and we went to accelerators and incubators, and we started developing a curriculum that made sense for a 15- and 16-year-old. And then we validated it with universities and MBA programs and made revisions and modifications. And the kids came up, we came up with this program that teach, teaches kids how to do ideation all the way through funding. You know, in other words, taking an idea and making it a reality. You know, the next thing we had to do was reach out to this community. And boy, oh boy, we reached out to a handful of entrepreneurs and said, could you help us pay for this? You know, we told Tom Leonard when we opened up our, our meeting with him, we said, we have an idea that won't cost you anything. So now we had to deliver. And, you know, every single person we asked said yes. And then we had to handpick, you know, members from the community, subject matter experts like Greg. We needed 20 Gregs to come in and teach kids, you know, financial modeling, market sizing, ideation, all the things that you could imagine that we needed to teach a student about how to start a business. And all 20 people we asked said yes. 
And then we had to go out to the startup world and ask people, could you mentor a team of students for one year? And all 25 people like Melissa that we asked said yes. We went to builders and contractors and suppliers and said, can you help us transform a classroom into a business incubator? And every one of them said yes. You see, what happened was this community took an idea and made it a reality. You know, the results have been amazing. In two years, Catherine, was a, as a freshman in business, took intro to business. She absolutely hated business. Thought it was the most boring class she ever took. And then she met Hagop Salakian, our teacher. He teaches incubator. He, he encouraged Catherine to enroll in the incubator class. And what transpired over the year was amazing. As Catherine took her idea and learned how to turn it into a reality, she became inspired, she became passionate, she became enthusiastic to a point where she learned business through a completely different lens. And today, Catherine went from hating business to actually running a business with her team, CleetGuard. Then there's Scott. You know, like any junior in high school, Scott's faced with some really big decisions. Am I going to go to college? If so, where? And what am I going to study? You know, thank goodness Scott's asking those questions now. He's ready to spend or borrow $100,000 to $250,000 to go get a four-year college degree somewhere. Aren't you glad that Scott's asking those questions as a junior in high school versus a junior in college when it's a little late? As Scott took his idea and learned how to take it and form it into a reality, he became focused, crystal clear that he wanted to be an entrepreneur. And today, Scott's at Baylor University studying entrepreneurship, one of the top three undergrad entrepreneurial programs in the country. And not only is he studying entrepreneurship, he's running a company, fantastic, with his team. And then there's Emily. Emily is a really, really bright young lady. Uh, as a junior in high school, though, she's, she was pretty quiet, you know, um, just kept her thoughts to herself. I remember at three weeks into the class, Emily and, and the rest of the students had to get up and do what's called an elevator pitch. Tell us what your business idea is, what the value proposition is, and why anybody should care. 30 seconds. Emily's name's called. She gets up. She kind of muscles through it. She sits down, though, and she's really, really glad that was over. Fast forward to the end of the year. Emily's in front of 11 investors in that class. She steals the show. Not only is her business funded, but uh, investors are asking her for her resume when she graduates from college. See, what Emily discovered as she took her idea and made it a reality, she discovered confidence. You know, that's something she will take with her the rest of her life. You know, the re I have dozens of these stories. I can go on and on. There's so many so that Tom Leonard had another idea. He said, hey, why don't we share this with other schools? Why don't we... Why don't we do that? And he, so he formed open houses, invited students in, and, or uh, other schools in. We went on, on speaking engagements with him. And then Carl and I decided to form a non-for-profit organization. And two of our volunteers, Christy Scott and Margarita Jaleski, joined the team. And today, after two years in the Barrington program, this program is live in 33 different schools in six different states. There are a 1,000 volunteers helping thousands of children. There's 19 additional schools already signed up for next year. That's the power of a community taking an idea and making it a reality. It's amazing. So let's go back to this original question. Are entrepreneurs born or are they made? You know, I don't think the last 15 minutes we answered that. But I hope we can all agree to the following, that when you have an idea, you have a choice. I mean, you could play it safe or say maybe someday, or you can make it a reality. You know, heck, Tom Leonard could have absolutely played this safe. If there's anybody that could have played it safe, it was Tom Leonard. He had 1.7 years left on his contract. You know, and if Tom Leonard would have played it safe, Catherine would still hate business. Scott would be somewhere in college, but far less focused. And Emily, she'd keep her thoughts to herself. 
you know what, but Tom didn't play it safe. And so these students, students like this around the country, for years to come, see, they're going to discover this power of taking an idea and making it a reality. You know, that's not only going to change their, you know, preparedness for this new entrepreneurial world. That could change their life like it changed Anne Marie's. Or they can change the world like Steve Jobs did. So let me leave you with one final thought. So if you're a student and you're just at the beginning of this journey, or you're Anne Marie and you're at a fork in the road, or you're Tom Leonard and you're at the, you know, near your end of your career, no matter where you are in life, when you have an idea, don't play it safe. Make it a reality. Thank you.